There's a surprising amount of action happening right now in India's food, beverage, and restaurant space. So on the one hand, you have Zomato, which is trying to buy Paytm's movie ticketing business. And then on the other hand, it looks like trouble might be brewing at third wave coffee roasters. And we'll talk about that one first. So just last year, Third Wave Coffee Roasters had raised a massive $35 million funding round. And a short while later, The Ken published this story titled Third Wave Coffee is Bad News for Starbucks. And a lot of people thought that Third Wave Coffee Roasters was going to wipe out Starbucks from India. But here we are in 2024, and the reality is completely different. The company had laid off more than 100 employees months after their biggest fundraiser. And today, more than 70% of Third Wave Coffee Roasters stores are in losses. So what exactly is going on at this company? Well, this detailed report by the cap table shares some insights about Third Wave's troubles, and it all boils down to their business and their management. So back in 2018, Ordan had raised $225 million and became one of the fastest unicorns in India. And around that time, Sujit Kumar, one of the co-founders of Ordan, had started working out of this little-known coffee outlet in Bengaluru called Third Wave Coffee Roasters to stay away from all the chaos at Ordan's office. Eventually, Sujit ended up investing in this coffee business, and today he's actually the third biggest individual shareholder after the three co-founders of the company. And that wouldn't have been a problem if Sujit had just stayed a shareholder, but instead he decided to act like a co-founder. In fact, here's a quote from one of Third Wave Coffee Roasters investors quoted in the cap tables report. The founders have very little say in operations, and it is Sujit Kumar, co-founder of Oran, and an angel investor calling all the shots. The same investor even said that Sojit tells people at parties that he has built third wave coffee roasters, and it's kind of true. The report says that Sujit played a huge role in helping Third Wave Coffee Roasters secure additional funding, expand to new regions, and get prominent investors. Sujit was the one who got Westbridge Capital and Kreagis, and these are the two biggest investors in the company. However, it looks like Sujit went about building Third Wave Coffee Roasters the same way that he built Oran. He spent a lot of money to expand quickly and get more market share at the cost of profitability. Today, Third Wave Coffee Roasters is burning five crore rupees every month. 70% of all their coffee outlets, like I mentioned earlier, are in losses, and they only have about one year of runway left. On top of that, one of the co-founders and the CFO of Third Wave Coffee Roasters, Sushan Goyal, has moved to an advisory role without giving any reasons. And if you want to dive into all the details, I would highly recommend that you go check out the Cap Tables report. It's a great read. All right, now moving on to the next news item here, Zomato has confirmed that they are in talks with Paytm to potentially acquire their movies and ticketing business. This would make it Zomato's biggest acquisition since Blinkit. Now, a lot of you might be wondering why Zomato would want to get into the ticketing business in the first place and pay so much much for it. You might even start to think that Dipendra Goyal is crazy for doing something like this. In fact, a lot of people called him crazy for paying more than 4,000 crore rupees for Blinkit, which was a loss-making business at the time. But today, we call him a genius because he successfully managed to push Blinkit towards the path of profitability while boosting its revenue. Now, coming back to my original question, why does Zomato want to buy Paytm's movies and ticketing business? Well, honestly, no one really knows for sure, but I have a couple of ideas. See, according to some estimates, Paytm is currently making around 300 to 350 crore rupees selling movie and live show tickets. And the thing is, whenever you're booking a movie ticket on platforms like Paytm or Book My Show, you simply book your ticket and then you get out of the app, you close it. But Zomato sells food. So think about that for a second. If Zomato is selling a movie ticket and gives you the option to buy food and beverages along with it, well, I think a lot of people will take that option. And of course, when you make that purchase, Zomato gets a nice little cut from both the movie ticket sale and also from the sale of food from the restaurant partners. And obviously, food and movies are a great combination. Just look at PVR Inox, which is one of the biggest theater chains in India. They're making more than 35% of their revenue by selling food and beverages. And so I feel like that's exactly what Zomato is trying to do here with the acquisition of Paytm's movie and ticketing business. In fact, Zomato has already made more than 50 crore rupees from selling tickets through their own platform in FY23. And just last week, Zomato even said that they'll be investing 100 crore rupees in Zomato Live, their live events and ticketing business. 
Now, speaking of potential acquisitions, Unacademy is in talks with K-12 Techno Services for a potential merger. And this company operates 90 plus ORCID schools across the country. Now, these reports have not been confirmed by either of these two companies. So do take this news with a grain of salt. But if the deal materializes, the two companies might end up creating a joint venture with each of them having a 50% stake in the combined entity. And according to this NTRAC report, Unacademy has already invested in K-12 Techno Services Services. In fact, even three years back, there were reports that Unacademy was going to acquire K-12 Techno Services, but at that time, nothing happened. Unacademy launched their first offline learning center back in 2022, and the number of students at their offline centers has been growing consistently. Then, earlier this year, PhysicsWalla went ahead and launched their own school, but this merger with K-12 Techno Services could open up a lot of doors for Unacademy. First, they'd have access to more than 75,000 school students to expand their business, but that's not all because K-12 Techno Services also offers a full-stack education, content, and technology platform to more than 900 educational institutions as well. All right, next up in the news, the Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center, also known as INS, Space has launched a pre-incubation entrepreneurship program for early stage space startups. Now, to be clear, early stage space startups in this case means companies that were established on or after the 1st of July of 2022, but the program is also open for students interested in space technology as well. It's an extensive 20 month long program which will help you ideate, innovate, and demonstrate your prototype with the help of experts. So if this is something that you're interested in, you can find out more details about this program using this link in the description of this video. All right, next up in the news, earlier this week, Ixigo's parent company, Le Travenu's Technology, was listed on the stock markets at 138.1 rupees per share, getting a 48.5% premium on its IPO price of 93 rupees per share on the NSE, the National Stock Exchange. They closed their first day at 165.72 rupees on the NSC and 161.99 rupees on the BSC, the Bombay Stock Exchange. And Ixigo is one of those businesses that's been building slowly out of the limelight that most Indian startups get. In fact, it took them 18 years to get to their IPO. And in an interview with the ARC web, Rajneesh Kumar, one of the co-founders of Ixigo, even said that it was a boring business, but boring is good. And the stock markets clearly agree with him. All right, now let's move to the funding news segment for today's video. So this week, Indian startups raised a total of $176 million, which is slightly less than last week's $199.2 million. Now, taking a look at some of the companies that raised funds this week, first of all, we have Gurugram-based lending company Umid Housing Finance, and they raised $76 million in their Series F round, making it the biggest funding round this week. Next, we have New Delhi-based beer brand Bira91, and they raised $25 million. And then after that, we have Bengaluru-based fashion brand Rogan, which has Virat Kohli as their investor and brand ambassador, and they raised $15 million. Following this, we have Bengaluru-based fintech startup Pop, which gives you cash back in the form of Pop coins for every UPI transaction that you make using their platform. And you can use these coins to shop on their curated e-commerce platform, which is kind of like Cred Coins and Cred's Marketplace. And they raised $2.4 million in their seed round. Next, we have another Bengaluru-based fintech platform, Prosper.io, which lets you automate your tax filings, and they raised $1.55 million in their pre-seed round. After that, we have Mumbai-based vegan ice cream brand, Go Zero, and they raised $1.5 million in their pre-series A round. And then finally, we have Bengaluru-based generative AI startup, Aina, which lets you create studio-quality product photo shoots without actually doing the photo shoots by using their custom AI model instead. And they raised $1.5 million in their seed round. Now, before I let you guys go, you should definitely check out the podcast that we recently made in collaboration with Google Play. This is me sitting down with the founders of Programming Hub. And this is an incredible story. These guys built a completely bootstrapped, profitable business. It's massive now. They have more than 40 million students using their platform, and I think you'll really enjoy it. But either way, thank you so much for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires, and I will catch you in the next one.